Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 18th of October. Now, I'm going to be presenting uh, research from the medical school in Chicago today about the amount of uh, sars coronavirus 2 RNA that's shed during normal breathing. Now, it just seems quite incredible. <laughs> this hasn't been done up to this point, especially when we consider some of the, uh, shall we say, confident statements made by our medical, scientific and political leaders about how important it was to get vaccinated to prevent those around us. This casts a very critical light on that. So what this research is about is basically the first eight days are the most infectious uh, after, after initial infection. It doesn't tell us about infection infectivity before first symptoms, but it's the first eight days after symptoms, an average of uh, 80 viral particles per minute shed during the first eight days, then it drops off quite quickly. There's a lot of variation between individuals, but it seems that people that are sicker shed more virus, but that varies quite a lot. But the key thing is that there is no significant difference, no significant difference between the amount of viral particles shed by someone who has been vaccinated and the amount of viral particles shed by someone who has not been vaccinated. Now, if this is true, if this is substantiated by further research... That means there would be no scientific basis for saying that vaccination of one person protects another person. But you wouldn't quite guess that from some of the uh, overstatement, p potential overstatement, don't want to be too harsh on these people, uh, that was said during the pandemic, which influenced our thinking really quite significantly. Let's just look at a few of them now as a walk down memory lane. This is not about freedom or personal choice. It's about protecting yourself and those around you, the people you work with, the people you care about, the people you love. My job as president is to protect all Americans. Well, Mr. Biden sounded pretty confident there. I'm not getting it, Mr. Biden. I was looking for clips from other political leaders as well, but I couldn't find them. Maybe some of them have been deleted. From our own country, but particularly from the experience in the UK, the vaccines we have do protect well against the Delta variant. So if ever there was a reason to get vaccinated, it's right now because we're seeing this Delta variant double every two weeks. We're up to 20.6 percent. So we've got to get the, the job done. I mean, it's, it's, it's really unfortunate and, and somewhat puzzling when the data are right in front of you and you know exactly what you need to do to protect against these types of numbers, which you showed on the screen. You seem to be saying there that uh, get vaccinated to keep the number of new cases down. That's my impression of what he said. Our data from the CDC today suggests, um, you know, that, that vaccinated people do not carry the virus, don't get sick, um, and, and that it's not just in the clinical trials, but it's also in real world data. No, I want to be clear about what the CDC, CDC is saying and what the CDC is not saying. The CDC is saying they have concluded that fully vaccinated people are at a very, very low risk of getting COVID-19. Therefore, if you've been fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a mask. Let me repeat, if you are fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a mask. The safest thing for the country is for everyone to get vaccinated. Joe Rogan, you may have heard about this, made comments about young people getting vaccinated. Vaccinated, It's getting a lot of buzz. He said, if you're like 21 years old and you say to me, should I get vaccinated? I say no. If you're a healthy person and you're exercising all the time and you're young and you're eating well, I don't think you need to worry about this. Saying young, healthy people shouldn't get vaccinated. Just quickly, your response? Well, that's incorrect, Savannah. And the reason why is that you're talking about yourself in a vacuum then. You're worried about yourself getting infected and likelihood that you're not going to get any symptoms. But you can get infected and will get infected if you put yourself at risk. And even if you don't have any symptoms, you are propagating the outbreak because it is likely that you, even if you have no symptoms, that you may inadvertently and innocently then infect someone else who might infect someone who really could have a problem with a severe outcome. Yeah. So if you yeah. want to only worry about yourself 
and not society, then that's okay. But if you're saying to yourself, even if I get infected, I could do damage to somebody else, even if I have no symptoms at all. And that's the reason why you've got to be careful and get vaccinated. Yeah. So you say young, healthy people should get vaccinated. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's get straight down to the detail of this paper now. Now, it's a simple device that you breathe in and out of. It's remarkably simple. The, the most clever inventions often are simple, and I'll be showing you the details of it later. But it's testing for the amount of RNA, the SARS coronavirus, to RNA shed during normal breathing. Now, this is a preprint paper from the University of uh, Chicago, um, but it's uh, it looks pretty good to me. I've read through it, obviously. Um, so um, this is the paper here. Um, Quantity of SARS coronavirus 2 RNA copies exhaled per minute during natural breathing. This is the key thing, during natural breathing. And of course, natural breathing is what happens during the natural situation. This is so obvious. Why hasn't this been studied before? It's really quite, uh, quite strange. Um, now, uh, the vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals exhaled similar levels of SARS coronavirus 2 RNA. This is from the paper we found that vaccinated and unvaccinated participants inhaled similar numbers of SARS coronavirus 2 RNA copies. And I'll be giving you the numbers in a minute, but there's no significant difference between the two. Um, in fact, I'll give you them now. Viral RNA levels in vaccinated individuals on days 1 to 16 ranged from, this is vaccinated people, remember, 0 to 549 exhaled copies per minute. So very great deal of variation between individuals not to uh, 400, 549 per minute. So that's in uh, vaccinated. Now, in people that were unvaccinated, the numbers were higher, uh, not to 876. But the whole point about science is it has to be significant. This is not a significant result. So to be significant, P would have to equal uh, 0 0.05 or less. So it's nowhere near significant, actually. So no significant difference between the two. And any difference there would be would be uh, pretty short lived anyway, because we know that the uh, immune protection from these vaccines is rel relatively short. Hence, um, boosters are being advised by people like the CDC, for example, at the moment. So no significant difference. So that's really quite interesting. Yes, we need a bigger study. Would it become significant with larger numbers? In a sense, the time to find this is is uh, past now. Um, we would uh, we, we could do it with Omicron now because people are still getting infected with Omicron, but we couldn't do it with the previous variants. So, um, given that hard science, it looks like the uh, the individuals we looked at there could potentially be overstating. Let's just look quickly look through the rest of this paper. It is pretty interesting. Um, so, uh, levels of viral shedding on breath did not differ. Uh, between uh, the variants very much. So early variants, like the Wuhan variant early on, uh, I think that probably includes the Alpha variant, 0 to 876 per minute. Uh, Delta, uh, 0 to uh, uh, 549. Omicron, this is surprising. Omicron was actually lower. Um, 264 copies exhaled per minute. So the reason that Omicron is so much more infectious, presumably... Is because the Omicron um, binds much more effectively into the uh, the ACE2 receptor site rather than being larger numbers of um, particles actually exhaled, although we would need a larger study to be sure of that. But of course, thankfully, <laughs> the Wuhan uh, variety and the uh, Alpha and Delta varieties no longer exist. They've been replaced by the Omicron uh, varieties. Um, peak levels of... Uh, Peak levels of shedding on the breath were similar across variants. Um, so this is the amount, that, there's actually a graph here. So this is the amount that was actually shed across variants. These are the participants, and they've, they've arranged them into uh, increasing order. Uh, but we see that the average line there was pretty similar. The, the red there is uh, pre-delta, the uh, grey is delta, and the blue is omicron. So we see fairly similar levels of virus being shed between the uh, between the different different variants. In fact, while I'm here, I'll just show you this simple machine they use. It's really it's incredibly uh, clever. So it's just a syringe, and you put this, uh, I guess you put this in the fridge, this cold wrap round about it, round about it like that, and that causes the uh, condensation because it's cold round the outside, and then you just collect it. So you breathe in and out normally, 
the condensed particles are in there and then you can check those with a real time quantitative uh, preliminary chain reaction checks um so so simple and yet <laughs> the, the didn't think of it till these <laughs> clever people in Chicago worked it out. So congratulations on designing something so simple and, of course, cheap. Um, background here, SARS coronavirus 2 is spread through exhaled breath of infected individuals. Of course, we know this. Uh, how much virus an individual uh, is exhaling during normal breathing? We didn't know that before this. Now we do over the course of their infection. So this is the new information that's been found out here. Um, Previous studies focus on viral load inside the respiratory tract, but not in the breath. So the viral load inside the respiratory tract could potentially tell you how ill people got or could be a factor. But it doesn't tell you how transmissible they, they would be. That's the big, the big thing that this study adds. Uh, so COVID-19 patients, they use real-time quantitative PCR, so they could actually work out the number of RNA copies. And of course, an RNA copy represents one viral particle didn't uh, decrease significantly from day eight so we see that people are pretty infectious from day eight now frustratingly this doesn't tell us how infectious people were before they became symptomatic and i must say that is not clear in my mind i've read contradictory evidence on that recently but it does tell us that people are very infectious from first symptoms all the way through to day eight. Then it drops off really quite significantly, but they still excrete a little bit of virus up to day 20, but almost certainly not enough to be actually uh, infective uh, after day eight. That's called the inoculum, the amount of virus that someone will get in to actually cause a new infection um, in, in an individual. Um, and I know I, I've been exposed to huge amounts of SARS coronavirus too, just in the past few months and, haven't tested positive and uh, uh, have had no symptoms. Strange. Anyway, uh, COVID positive participants exhaled an average of 80 viral particles per uh, minute during the first eight days of infection, but it varied. It varied a lot between individuals, as you would expect, really. Some were over 800 in a minute. Uh, after day eight, a uh, steep drop off to levels nearing the limits of detection. So a little bit that could just about detect up to day 20. You could still detect it with higher um, thresholds, of course, on the PCR test, but that becomes can become spurious if we do it too much. Levels of exhaled viral RNA increased with self-rated symptom severity, although there was individuals, a lot of individual variation. So there was a tendency for people who were more symptomatic to produce more virus, but there was a lot of variation between individuals there, as we would expect, because of the large amount of... Uh, comorbidities between uh, individuals so i thought that was quite interesting and crucially here we see um, levels of exhaled viral rna did not differ across sex significantly across age so young and old exhale much the same amount male and female much the same amount time of day much the same amount didn't make much difference vaccination status not significantly different and there's all the YouTube clips to the bits I, uh, I've shown you there. So, um, you know, th th this is simple science, but hard science. And it just wasn't done up till this point. So I'll leave that with you as a, a point of uh, reflection. Now, um, I advertised these books a few weeks ago, completely free, I add, uh, for free download PDF. Um, I wrote these uh, during the last years of being a full-time lecturer. So th th this one is um, physiology, or the body's normal function. So you can download it, and, and the quality when you download it on the PDFs it is excellent. So you can download it, put it into your own notes, colour in the pictures, do whatever you like. That one's all normal disease function, and this one's all uh, abnormal disease, or abnormal function. So normal physiology, abnormal pathophysiology. And this goes through all the different uh, different diseases. So just to give you a, a, an inkling there, there's all the different, so what have we got? Nature and etiology, cause of disease, neoplasm, infectious disease, disorders of immunity, disorders of arteries, disorders of veins, shock, hemorrhage, cardiac disorders, it goes on. Um, covers all the basic physiology, really, that um, anyone who wants to take uh, a, an interest in uh, healthcare science seriously would uh, would be a good place to start so completely free we've had many tens of thousands of downloads which is really quite nice because writing books takes you an awful long time so um 
uh, d download and uh, uh, copyright free, you can use those. Um, this one, I've still got uh, quite a few hundred copies, and uh, hard copies of this book. If you want, if you live in the UK, you can order that in a hard copy. I'll put the link below. Um, I'm going to get them reprinted as soon as I get the time. <laughs> This one probably could be reprinted pretty soon. There's not much in that. The, the pathophysiology does change a bit, so I need to uh, just get round to updating some of the chapters in there. Uh, so for now, that one you can get in hard copy in the UK, but you can download them anywhere in the world, free PDFs. Um, it's, it's gratifying that people do so. It's, um, it's really quite nice to see all these um, downloaded copies. How much people are reading them, of course, I have no idea. But uh, anyway, we'll leave it there, and um, thank you for watching.